Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to this game's tutorial. Today, we finally do what I was talking about for like three episodes now. We start implementing some art. So, um, what's going on in this episode is we start with a really cool one. Not really cool, I guess, but the easiest one. This will be the stats icon. Now, I create, I personally create placeholders because I know you guys have your own idea of how your game is going to look. And I don't want to spend like five hours just drawing like try drawing a little sword or something like that when I know you guys are not going to be using it. And plus I'm not really good at that either, I'm not really good at drawing stuff on Photoshop. So I just create some placeholder, we um, have a certain way to place our art and integrate our art that is really optimal, so we pretty much just have a sprite sheet here, not a sprite sheet, sorry, an atlas, and uh, here it is, we can reuse multiple stuff in it. So with a single texture I was able to create these eight little icons that I'll probably eventually change. And then we implement it in the game um, where you saw and also here at this very spot. So that's the first piece of Lil Heart we are going to tackle, guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so let's get right into it. The first thing I'd like to tackle in terms of art is every single uh, stat icon. We'll start with something fun to do, I guess. So. You see over here, those stats, we've got a total of 8 stats, so I'd like to have those laid down in a single sheet, in a single um, PNG document. So right here I have my Photoshop open, and it is a blank page, so nothing is going on in here, and we are going to hit new, and let's go ahead and just create something that is 512 by 512. I'm going to call this stats icon. So what we've got here is basically just a square, and I'd like to be able to split that um, 4 in horizontal and 4 in vertical, so there will be a total of 8 and 16 icon maximum on this sheet. Now what that means is that we're not going to be using the whole picture, but we might actually um, just create some spot for the future, who knows. So in case we want to add some more stats later on, we can go ahead and just do that. Uh, something I like doing is going up here in view, and then new guide and I'll just create some guides really quickly so I split this at 50% in vertical split this at 25% in vertical and finally split it at 75 let's do the same thing for the horizontal so I'll just do 25% horizontal and then another 50% and finally the last one 75% in horizontal so we have this nice little um, cutting going on here I'm going to create a new layer and delete the background and I will just use this layer use my uh, J tool my bucket tool and just put the black color in there or something that is um, that is going to help us see what's on top of it so maybe like a gray ish color like that and I am going to go ahead and just start creating a folder these are going to be the stats and let's start by creating a some kind of pattern we can use for every single single stat icon. So now this is really up to you. I have no clue about this. I'm really not an artist, but what I like doing is I'll just grab this whole square, maybe put another color in there. So maybe this kind of color. Oh, you know what? I'll delete this. I'll create a um, rounded square instead. And just start it from here all the way to down there. Then I'll use my free transform tool, which is Control T, and I'll just scale this inward like this. So this could be the sides, and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control J, and then Control T again. Oh wait, let's change color first. Um, I'm gonna go back to this very color, and then hit Control T and just scale it in again. So we have this kind of uh, nice little effect here where it can just look like an actual square. Um, and now this is where we need to get creative, so I really don't know what we could do to this. I'm really bad. <laughs> Sorry about this, I'm really not an artist. I keep repeating myself every time, but it's true, I'm trying to get better at it. Um, maybe use the pen tool and do some kind of shapes, so what about that here? Like this make a selection out of that and delete. Then I'll delete the whole upper part of this, duplicate, hit Control T, right click, 
flip vertical. I know I'm going a little bit fast, but of course, um, you just do what you feel like doing. Going to merge this layer and then delete this part, duplicate again, flip horizontal this time and just move it right there. Yeah, something like that. So it looks a little bit better to me. Oh, maybe even flip it. So I'll use both layers that I just made, merge them, hit Control T again and flip it on this side. There we go, that works for me. Now, what could we do inside of that? And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be perfectly aligned, but hey, who cares? Maybe give this some kind of stroke effect, so I'll just double click on it, go under stroke, put it on, I don't know what kind of color I'll be using in my game, maybe some kind of really light, lightish color. Um, <laughs> this is something you should have done before actually making the art video, I guess. You should decide on some kind of color that you want to keep for the, the whole... I mean, the whole color palette of your game, basically, so you know what kind of team you want to go for and what kind of feeling you want to get out of your player. So, in my head right now, the, the first thing that comes up is really something that is light, something that is really... nothing too dark, just something that is light, friendly, and uh, casual. So, maybe some kind of blue like that. I really like blue, I guess. So, this... Bump down the stroke a little bit. And we can also add some inner glow. I'll bump up the size, I'll reduce the opacity. So it's really, really slight. And I'll just go for a nice white here. Something like that. Anyway, after watching this awful attempt at me making art, or trying to make art, hopefully you have a better idea of how um, you'll go about doing this yourself. Now, please don't use my techniques, they suck. And we can then we can then proceed to um, I don't know maybe add some kind of little texture down here as well maybe just some some kind of stroke would be good so I'll just use the same exact layer I've used for my black and maybe just do like a little reduce that size two and we can do some kind of little nice thing here okay that is definitely going nowhere but you get the idea again I'll just do a straight line. Ah, this looks way better now. Alright, so now I've got a result that is similar to that. Uh, what I'll be doing is I will be adding some kind of transparency in the background. So this is the corners. We don't really need to do anything with that. Um, wait, is it this corner? Okay, well, let's go ahead and just put some opacity on this. So maybe, say, 50 or 75%. And then we also need one for the frame in the back. But now the frame in the back is pretty much the whole thing, and that is not going to work. So what I'll do is I'll actually take this uh, rounded rectangle. I use the one tool to select this kind of shape that we've made in the past. And I'll go back on my rounded rectangle, hit uh, delete. Now this way, it actually looks like this. That's my background shape. And then on top of it, we put this. Now this can have a lower opacity of say 50% and we can just be happy with that and that's going to be our UI. Now is this light? This looks light if we have a lighter background I think. So this is what it would actually look like with a gradient behind it. Uh, maybe bump this to the maximum. Yep, I'll just be bumping the last layer to like 90%. Alright, so I'm satisfied with that um, <laughs> for now, I guess. And uh, what we'll be doing at this point is we are going to just duplicate that a few times. So as you can see over here, I've made a folder called Frame, and I've just put all my frame stuff into it. Now I'll be, I'll be um, duplicating this, then hit Control T on the keyboard, move it 126 pixels, or actually 128 pixels from the first one, or you just make sure it's centered, just as long as it looks good in... Um, your, how do you call it, and your guides, then that's good. Now I'll duplicate both of those by selecting them and then control J on the keyboard, move them on this side, that's 258 pixels. And are they aligned? They don't seem to be really aligned. Let me just move that again. All right, and then finally duplicate all of those one more time and we just lower them here. All right, so we've got 
eight nice slots for the actual icon. So what I'll be doing at this point is um, I'm going to be putting placeholders since I'm not going to like take you through the whole adventure of drawing a sword and stuff like that because I don't really know how. So I'll probably end up like watching a lot of tutorials on how to draw and trying to make something really nice. If you saw, <laughs> if you saw the carrot I tried to draw in the veggie tutorial, you understand why I'm doing this. All right, so um, we can just go ahead and just put some placeholder. You can just be a really good artist like me and um, <laughs> this is going to be attack. Oh wait. Before we actually go any further, we gotta make sure that they are, they are in um, order over here. So what I'll do is I'll go look up the stats. Where are my stats? I think they're, they are in the uh, tower stats. Or are they? They might be in the stat helper. My bad. So let's head over to the stats helper. And let's actually look at the order we declare them. So damage, range, speed, hit point. Regen, crit chance, damage. And luck. I'll just be putting them on the other screen as I am um, writing them down. So attack does not <laughs> does not actually exist. It's not a real skill. Let's go here. Type in damage. Next one is range. The next one is uh, speed. Now, if they're aligned or not in the center, doesn't really matter. They are place older, uh, at least for now. And does that work? Yep, that almost works. Let's keep going. That's region. Why did my font change? That's weird. Okay. That is going to be regen. The next one is crit chance. This fits, I think. Nice. Crit damage. I'll just type it like that. And finally, what's the last one? That is luck. Okay. So that's the best placeholder art you have ever seen. Now let's get in and integrate that inside of our game. So here's what we are going to do. We are going to um, first save this as a PSD somewhere that we can remember and we can just go back and modify this because of course this art is not really nice. Um, we are going to go inside of our folder wherever we save our tower. Over here this is tower YT. Uh, that's my project name and then under assets, I will go under artwork again, and I will just create a new folder in artwork, and this is going to be our PSD files. Stats icon.psd, that's a good name, why not? And we're going to hit save. Now, we're going to do another save as PNG this time, and we're going to go under artwork, the same folder, but this time we're going to type in, say, um, UI. And we're going to save stats icon.png. It's really important to have both of those because if you just um, end up saving a PNG you, and you quit Photoshop, then you don't have your PSD file to modify it anymore. So if we go back now in our game, we have the artwork folder, we have the PSD, which contains whatever it is that we made, and we also have the UI. Now, the way we, we actually um, tell Unity that this is multiple texture is by clicking on this very thing here, on this very file. We go up here under texture type, we use sprite 2D and UI, and the sprite mode is going to be multiple. Once that's done, we are going to enter the sprite editor, make sure you hit apply. And once you're in here, uh, what you usually do is just click and hold and just make a nice shape around every single one of those, but uh, since we know the size of every square, we have an option up here that is called Slice. So we're going to go under Slice, choose Grid by Cell Size, and we pretty much made uh, something that is 512 divided by 4, so 128. So every little square is 128 by 128, so let's just type that in. 128, 128, and then we slice. And as you can tell right here, they've made perfect slice for us just like this. And we can go ahead and just hit apply that little button right here, it's really sneaky. You hit apply and then you quit. And then once that is completed, we can go around in our game and just start implementing this heart. That is going to be the first piece of heart we have, and it's really cool. Not really, but hey, at least we're doing something. Okay, so in our hub scene, we have some icons we can use in our hub scene. So let's go over to not loot, not research, tower stats. Um, that's the hub object, okay, tower stats the menu. So we're going to go under UI root, tower stats menu. 
we are going to toggle it on by just putting the alpha on one. Let's also, also make sure we remove this one. That is the um, ability menu. Put that on zero. And now for every little single icon on the left here, we are going to be modifying that by hand because we're having a really good time right now. Nice. Okay, so the first one, is this the first one? I'm the I'm in the ability container. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. So under the stats icon panel, the side panel number one, we have this guy here. And this guy is the stat icon. Okay, so here it is. The first stat icon we're gonna be using is boom, damage. Now let's have a look at this. Does that look fine? It is not really big. But uh, as soon as the text is actually replaced by icon, it, uh, it is pretty much actually going to look a lot better. Um, we can also modify the size now that we can see how big this is going to be in the end. So maybe put that on 80 by 80 and we can put the margin on like 5. So maybe 75 in width, 75 in height and put the margin on 5. You actually get some kind of result like that. Um, it's really hard to tell if it's going to look good or not because we haven't really done the back panel. The panel in the back, they're all pretty much just annoying, I guess. We could go ahead and just start removing those slowly, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea to do that just yet. So I'm simply going to keep changing the stat icon here. So 5, 75, 75, and this is the second stat icon, which is the uh, range in this case. We then move on to the next one, 5, 75, 75, and that's a lot of just hand work, I guess, manual labor. And you just keep doing that until all your icons are actually set. So I will head over to the second side panel, and um, I will pretty much just resume the video whenever this is done as well. All right, so here we go. We have all the little icons now that we can we can actually put in the menu. We're gonna head over and actually see what we have in the game. Um, and I think all we really have to change is just the actual tower stats thing. There's nothing else using these icons as of now. So I'll go over here in the game and we're gonna go inside of the 2D UI, the bottom UI, turn off the ability panel, we don't need that. Now the stats panel is the one we have interest in. The first one here is actually hit, oh, is it hit point? Okay, to know which one this is, we can actually look at the very right side here. Um, under their stats container, as you can tell, this one is damage. So we can just open this up, go over here, and just choose the damage one. And I think they're pretty much in the order, the same order here as they were before. And the size is actually good looking, I think. And we can just go ahead and just swap those. And guys, that is going to be pretty much it. That is how we simply implement all the little icons we just made. Now I can't really see what's going on down there but um, I'm gonna keep putting that here. So is that speed? Yep, that's speed. Is that range? That is range. Cool. This one is region. So we haven't really changed the order of that. I guess that's good. We can say that we remain constant. And that's the crit damage. Is it the crit damage? That's the crit chance, and I've put the crit chance. Okay, and the next one is crit damage. And finally, the last one is luck. And I'll just boot this up, give this a try, and we'll have implemented our first piece of awful art. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. It does help quite a lot. And um, of course, you can leave a comment in the comment description in the comment section below if you have any question, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. You can also use the Facebook page for that. I tend to answer more through Facebook because it's more, I guess, more personal, and I get less uh, spammy stuff there. And if you like the series, if you just enjoy what I try to do with this channel, then please go check out the Patreon page. We have a lot of rewards there that you can actually uh, get if you donate a small amount. And uh, yeah, support us making this show. And by us, I guess, I mean me for now. Hey! Anyway, guys, um, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next episode.